once again, I'm three miles from Echo Lakes and stopped in the middle of the freeway for more work. As I'm gazing upon this extremely burned zone here, and there's one guy up there working it. Not sure what he's doing. This is the third stop on this trip. Uh, man, let's see. Uh, I've, I've been stopped on the road for about 25 minutes so far out of uh, almost two hours, a little bit less than two hours. Dang, it's too bad. I got an early start and I uh, I got, um, got out of town fast and then hit Highway 50 and things just went slow. But that's okay. I'm feeling slow myself today. I'm kind of kind of sleepy. Uh, definitely not in shape. But it's not going to be that hard of a hike. But damn, it's cold. It's beginning to warm up finally. <laughs> but uh, it's chilly. Anyway, it's enough babble. Got a few more minutes to wait here. Oh, I'm on that nasty Echo Lakes trail. It doesn't seem to be that bad now, though. Uh, nobody's in their cabin, so nobody to look up at me while they poke their barbecue. Saying to themselves, boy, I'm glad I'm not that guy hot and sweaty up on that trail. <sighs> but I'm not hot and sweaty. In fact, I thought long and hard about uh, wearing an upper layer before packing and just at the last moment decided against it I'm only just now beginning to feel a little bit of sweat so it's good that I'm slowing down here cool off and I'm pretty happy with my decision to do this trip here uh, I never go to Tamarack never plan on camping at Tamarack Lake because this is tourist central and Tamarack Lake is the closest lake off of the trail once you get past Echo Lakes um, but there is nobody out here. I've seen a few day hikers. I saw one guy staring at maps back at the chalet. Asked him if he was the PCT hiker because he had all the gear and he had the look and all that. And he said, oh yeah, four times. But he's not doing the PCT now. He's just gonna spend a night, spend a night out there somewhere. Hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, so I may well have peace and quiet tonight. I might have a lake to myself, who knows. But after nice flat hiking trails climbing up again. Oh man, I don't like about this trail. Why is there all this climbing when you're just going around a lake? Ah, okay, I'm gonna catch my air here and then get back to getting serious. I haven't seen anyone on the trail since the very beginning. Interesting. The weather is cooperative. It's uh, hazy clouds right now. I'm about halfway through the lower lake. Been climbing and bitching about it. I don't like climbing on a lakeside trail. It's ridiculous. But one thing that's uh, really different here, come on, is that it is so quiet. Usually when I'm here, and, you know, there's people on the trail, there's people down at their camps, and there's a whole bunch of activity back at the, um, the dock and the, uh, uh, the chalet. Um, and the, the voices just go across the lake like nothing. It's not at all uncommon to be on the far end of Echo Lake and hear people talking at the other end of Echo Lake, almost two miles away. But it is insanely quiet. When I stop, last time I stopped, I heard a little plane flying. I thought it was a boat on the water, and then I realized there's no boats on the water because the water is too low. And just now there was a jet, but uh, when I stopped here, it was just dead quiet. Just my ears started ringing right away. <sighs> Still haven't seen any backpackers yet. Uh, just a few day hikers. So I'm pretty sure I'll have a lake to myself one way or another, at least tonight. We'll see.
clouds are still thin and wispy. Oops. Thin, wispy clouds, nothing threatening. Although the general haziness of it all feels a little threatening, but the weather report says no. Okay, gotta keep going, but slowly. That right over there is the little inlet between the two lakes. Interesting scene here. Interesting that there's trails crisscrossing all over the place down there. And interesting, the water is so low. Well, you can't really see any here, but uh, there are piers up on the rocks. Anyway, I'm still headed up. <laughs> Slowly. Oh. Um, I passed one guy with, I, with a backpack. I mean, he was coming down. Um, nobody has passed me going up. Over the course of two miles, that might be a record. Uh, two miles to my trailhead without anybody, day hikers or backpackers passing me. That's, uh, that's good. But that's not really, it doesn't really attest to how strong I'm hiking. I just showed you how few people are back here. Very few. I saw one guy with a backpack uh, who camped at Lake of the Woods with his big fluffy dog. His name is Hugh. Uh, and he recognized me from my YouTube channel. Studied up before going out. And chose Lake of the Woods. Good choice. Said there was nobody there last night. It was a Monday night. And where are we? Middle September, middle October. That's pretty good. It's really rare to have Lake of the Woods to yourself in any situation. Uh, Hugh meets Hal. I mentioned that's uh, two names. Always misunderstood. <laughs> uh, okay, that's enough for now. I'm getting close to the taxi and I'm going to take a break. Um, at the, not at the launch, but, you know, around there. I wanted to take a break two and a half miles in and get all strong for the steepness because that's where the steepness starts. And after I get to the turn off for the water taxi, it's only 1.3 miles to Tamarack, 1.7 to Cadwin. So I gotta gotta say I'm doing pretty well today. In spite of being weak, in spite of being tired, my left knee is a little weak. Doesn't like going uphill. Doesn't want to flat ground, but I have to be careful of it going uphill. It just never got strong this season. Okay, that's enough. Boat taxi sign. Yay! I've been here for a few minutes. Already taking a break. Already snacked a bit, had some water, had some conversations. That was right after I took my pack off. I hear uh, jogging footsteps coming up behind me. I used to say to this guy, "Ah, oh, it drives me crazy when I see people running and I'm and I'm huffing and puffing my ass off." He thought that was amusing. Asked me if I was a PCT hiker. I say no. I'm an overnight hiker. <laughs> he says that's good. And I said, yeah, you're right. That is good. Um, and then I saw a couple coming up from... They were taking a break down at the taxi. Uh, they they went over to uh, Tamarack Lake and um, Ralston Lake. And they did not see Cagwin Lake. They didn't know it was there until I pointed it out to them. Um, they said there's a, a couple of women with a baby there now. Uh, not camped. And they also said they hadn't seen anybody except that one guy with a backpack. So, yeah, looking good. Um, it took me an hour and a half to do these two and a half miles. I find that to be perfectly acceptable. Um, I have almost two miles to go. It'd be great if it only took an hour, but it's going to take two hours probably. <sighs> Which means it'll be around... Uh, four o'clock when I get in the camp. He, ugh, I can do better than that. <laughs> so I hope I can do better than that. Uh, all right, well, I better get going then. Finally, it's been a long time since I made a left turn at this trail. 
And I'm tired. I mean, I'm doing just fine, but this trail is just making me sleepy. The sun's coming out a bit now. Well, it's coming out quite a bit now. But it's been uh, very hazy all day. And just kind of sleepy. This is the time of day where I might take a nap anyway. All right. So I uh, talked to the uh, the two women and baby that uh, were at Tamarack Lake. I didn't see anybody here. I didn't see any backpackers here. I didn't see much of anybody here. Here at lovely Tamarack Lake, here at the first good campsite. It does look good. Another tent spot back here. Another one back there. But I want, I want amazing. <laughs> I want the best. So I want to get to Cagwin Lake and see what that looks like. Because somebody told me a few weeks ago out here on another hike I was on that they went over to Cagwin Lake and he was stunned at this gorgeous campsite. And I'd never heard of that. So I looked it up and sure enough, book says there's campsites there. The one book that mentions Cagwin Lake. The other one doesn't. Well, I'm here at, uh, what's it called? Cagwin Lake. Nice art feature there. But it ain't much of a lake. It's fairly shallow, and there are not great campsites here. I can understand what that guy was saying. There's a real good tent spot that's totally um, exposed. But it's really nice <laughs> up at the top of that little tiny cliff there. Hopefully I can walk around the lake without going over that cliff because I'm not pleased with my campsite. And I want better. And maybe there's a better campsite on the other side there. Can't tell if I can do it the easy way here, so I'm just gonna go the long way. And it's easy to understand why a lot of people don't know this lake is here. You have to know that it's here to, to stumble on it. Uh, I uh, had to refer to my map several times on the way over here because it's, a, it's a very steep. If you miss the exact spot, you end up being cliffed. So this is the awesome campsite the guy was talking about it is kind of nice but it is totally exposed there's no shade anywhere nice tent spot ah it's gonna take too long to get around the lake okay yeah i'm pretty glad i left my pack over there there's nothing awesome about this One maybe tent spot, maybe another maybe tent spot back there. Okay, there are no great campsites here. I am disappointed, but I will remain here. It's still a mountain lake, and it's still gonna be all mine. And I can make it across the easy way, so I'll put the camera away and try that. Well, after a long think about it, I decided to go back to Tamarack Lake it's going to wipe me out, expend all the rest of my energy to get back there, but that's, I gotta do it. Bummer. Huh, well, at least I've seen it here. And I was trying to tell myself that one benefit of actually staying here, sorry, I'm still filming here, was that I was really close to a really cool cliff drop-off view. Is that true? It's not very true. Okay, I can see like a lake from here, but it's not magnificent. No. Don't like it here, I'm leaving. Boy, it's gonna be a bit getting out of here. 
There are the Echo Lakes. And over there somewhere is Caglin Lake. And I just came up this bit of steepness here and it killed me. I am exhausted. I'm almost to the top. Not much more climbing to do, so I'll be at the lake pretty soon. But I'm not gonna be there in good shape. All right, move on. Well, there's lovely Tamarack Lake in the distance. And I got a nice uh, distant campsite here. Huge campsite. And I, I just kept going until I found a perfect tent spot. I need perfect. I walked up to this and I'm like, what the hell? It's got a big hole in it. And then over here is a perfect flat granite sand tent spot. That rock in the middle will move. Yay, so I have a perfect tent spot. It's a long way from the water, but I have incredible capacity of water. I don't have to go to get water once a day. But I need to go do all the camp stuff now. Phew, I want to put my tent up and grab some water. And then I'll do some relaxing. I'm really pretty whipped. But I'm fine. This place is mine. Too bad Caglin Lake didn't work out, but now I know. When people say great campsite to you, get specifics. <laughs> well, I got my backpack on and I'm moving camp again. Only because I don't really like, come on, flip. It's not that great up here. It's okay. This is a world-class tent spot. But in setting up the tent, I was looking over here and going, oh, grass looks pretty green over here. And I don't really have a good kitchen hangout zone over there. So why not take up all the best resources of the lake since I'm the only one here. Got the best tent spot up there. There's lots of other ones. But this is a nice place to hang out. Yes, very nice place. I will go up when it gets dark, crash in my tent, but this is where I'm gonna have camp. All right. Phew, I'm so tired. Well, camp is beginning to shape up. Got the water going. Haven't done much else yet though. Uh, I did a little bit of cleaning and I'm gonna go up the hill now and uh, uh, fill up my pad and get my down fluffing up there. Man, it's crazy. I, uh, as you can see, the sun is down on the lake at the moment. I've been busting ass for, for a while now. Not moving all that fast, but it's, it's hurting. It's five o'clock. It's over two hours. I've been here over two hours. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but I bailed on Caglin Lake and came up here and started doing my stuff and didn't get all that far. It's just so tired and I'm moving really slowly and uh, clumsily. One thing I'm very pleased with is I filled my water bucket. Um, the water here is just too shallow to fill the bucket, but I filled the four liter thing several times and filled this thing up and it's full it is full of water so i got plenty of water all the way until noon tomorrow but okay let's put this thing away and do some more work hmm. interesting bird whistle just now I'm sitting down for the first time all day. I am so damn tired. It took me so long to get camp set up. But it's set up really nice. And I'm sitting in my chair, eating some, come on. Uh, sipping on some miso soup. One of my elixirs of life for backpacking. It's got liquid, it's got salt. It's got food all in one package, and I need all of those things right now, really bad. So. It's my lake. It's my three lakes, actually. 
Didn't see Walston yet. I'll do that tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> That's going to be a very mild day activity. I did make one error. A major one. I left my refrigerated stuff at home. My, I had a package of salami and cheese for lunch tomorrow and lunch today. Um, so I don't have that. <laughs> uh, I got to lose weight, so that's a good thing. But um, it's going to be pretty slim pickings for lunch tomorrow. Damn. And, uh, and on the hike out. Um, I damned just now because I just remembered that I'm running out of my vast supply of, of backpacking food, my single servings. And the only single serving dinners I have left are uh, beef stroganoff, which I like a lot. It's the most popular one, probably. But I have, I have it for tonight and tomorrow. That's kind of a drag. But if it means I get to stay here, <laughs> one, two, three, come on, you can do it then I'll deal with it. I love having lakes to myself. Although, there'll be traffic here tomorrow. I'm right on the the, the lakeside trail. That's a obnoxious noise telling me that my message finally found a satellite and got sent. Good. Okay, it is... 5.30? 6 o'clock? No, it's got to be 6. Right? I should have checked a while ago. It is 5.45. Going to be dark at 6.30, so I don't have all that much time before dark. But at least I get to sit and relax with my miso soup, which is just an appetizer. It was supposed to be a uh, an after-hike uh, thing. But it took so long for me to get around to it, it is now an appetizer. Okay, turn this thing off. There's a raven turf war going on. Sure are noisy. Loud neighbors I got here. Well, it's uh, it's quarter after six. I got food steeping. Feeling better by the minute. The miso does wonders. Cleaning and putting on warm clothes does wonders. It's cold. Uh, it's 50, 54 degrees. And that's uh, pretty close to the low of the, the last couple of times I've been out. So, what do you think? Uh, I asked my uh, GPS thingy for a uh, weather update. See what it says. It was on the money last time. Pretty close. Uh... So nothing to do but uh, chat with the ravens and wait for my food to be ready. It'll be dark then, of course. So I'm just going to gaze upon the beautiful view. Huh. That triple click isn't happening as fast. <clears throat> it's not as nice as the other views I've had recently, but this is good old Tamarack Lake. PCT is way up there. I've looked from up there down here many a time. Many, many times. All right. I'm just going to sit back and relax now. <laughs> uh, sitting in this campsite here with tent spots all over the place. Uh, I mean, every, every 10 feet there's a place that somebody cleared a, a tent spot. Most of them are really small and not very good. Uh, you could put a Boy Scout troop back here. But it, re it reminded me uh, of one of, my, one of my first, maybe my first major trip. I was just a kid, 20, 21 maybe, um, and did a loop uh, in Yosemite around the Clark Range of mountains. <clears throat> uh, and I did this late. It was after Labor Day. And um, I get in at, at the end of the trip. Uh, I'm going from Glacier Point down to Yosemite Valley. 
it's through a 50 mile loop and uh, near the end and and I wasn't going fast by any means five seven miles a day um, near the end at Merced Lake I had to camp at Merced Lake and I was the only person in the Merced Lake area. It was weird. I'm sure that just can't happen these days, even in September and October. Um, there was this vast camp area with dozens of tent spots, pretty closely put together. It was pretty much like a campsite down in Yosemite Valley, but up at Merced Lake. I don't know if, if they rebuilt that. Well, they must have done something to it. But yeah, I remember... Uh, they diverted a creek through right through the camp area um, and diverted it such that it would be um, uh, fast moving water so the piles of debris that <laughs> uh, people from campsites like that would put into the water you know cleaning off their dishes and stuff will be distributed better there was a huge campsite, and it was only me. You know, there was like, I don't know, six or seven bear cable setups. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Close to 40 years. But I'm glad I moved from Cagwin Lake, because that was a subpar um, camp situation there. And I was staring at the place to put my tent. And once again, there was bumps all over the place. And I just said, forget it. No, I know there's going to be absolutely perfect tent spots at Tamarack Lake. And damn it, I want a perfect tent spot. So, boy, that was a rough return from there. I was so wiped out. I'm still wiped out. I'm still needing to tend to myself. But getting better. Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> I all, I'm always doubting myself on the trail, but when I get here, I, I realize, oh yeah, that was worth it. Even for what I consider Tamarack Lake, a lesser lake. It's a nice lake. It's a very nice lake. Nicer than Cagwin Lake. Um, but it's it's right on the trail, and it's heavily used. I really don't like coming here, except way in the off, off season, like now. And sure enough, there's nobody here. So I'll see some day hikers tomorrow. Maybe there'll be some overnighters, but plenty of room here. Okay, that's it. Trying to figure out how to illuminate myself without blinding myself. Okay, that's that's not so bad. Ah, well, I just turned off a hockey podcast that I really enjoyed. Really small time small town hockey podcast um and i'm just watching something making ripples in the the lake here i don't know what i don't know if it's fish because i'm not hearing any excited jumping or anything finished dinner while i was listening to the podcast oh a little bit of normalcy there listening to listening to something instead of just the nothing that is here. I, I just now f feel like I've uh, settled into camp and it's dark and I'm a little discombobulated but happy. <laughs> uh, so I'm not really sure what comes next but one thing I know what comes next is I'm going to get up out of this chair that I've been in for half an hour and pace around a little bit and get the camp ready for a night because it really isn't yet. All right, that's enough for now. Don't know if you can even see anything here. The tent at night. A little reading from my not so bright tent here. Hmm, I see something there. Well, I'm in the tent. It's uh, it's before 10 o'clock. I just kind of got bored with things out there. <clears throat> and, well, not really. My uh, my back is kind of stiff. And it would it just didn't like sitting down, pacing around. I really wanted to just lie down. 
and feels pretty good. But it is way warmer than forecast. Again, it was supposed to be down 32, 30 degrees. Didn't didn't make it anywhere near there. Um, it was probably 52, 51 out there when I came in the tent. And it's quite comfortable in here right now. I got a lot of layers on, but that uh, it works well with this setup. And uh, I'm going to listen, finish the podcast I was listening, listening to earlier. And uh, go to bed and try to get a bunch of sleep. So I'll have a fun day tomorrow. Okay, signing off. Oh, good morning. It is a lovely morning here at Tamarack Lake. It's cold. It's in the mid-40s. Let's see, it's probably more than that now. Oh, God, it's still 43. That's, uh, that was the temperature in my tent when I got up this morning. I had sunrise colors on my tent. It was interesting seeing the, uh, I had part of my tent open so I could see out. And I, <clears throat> Uh, I could see the, the trees outside my tent and it was dark out there, but then the trees kind of started to turn red and then slowly the, everything illuminated. It was pretty cool. Uh, I am probably, I'm leaving today. Not, no, probably about it. And I, I just keep looking at my food situation. I just can't make it food wise. It'll be close, but. It'll probably mean hiking hungry and getting to the car hungry where there is no food. And you know, I don't want to do that. That's that's really pushing it. And my back hurts a bit still. It was weird. It was hurting on the right side last night. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and it had loosened up and felt better. But then I woke up again and it was tight on the other side. I don't... Probably because I... Uh, I struggle getting out of that tent sometimes. I never do it the same way twice. It's, it's weird. And uh, sometimes I have to do an abrupt motion at it, you know, when I was I was shivering too. That's right. It was really cold the first time I got up. I made the mistake of just throwing on my down jacket and walk and going out. My jacket was 40 degrees. <laughs> it froze me for a moment until it warmed up. And, uh, yeah, I didn't feel good. Uh, I thought I'd sleep it off, but I slept a lot. I mean, I was in a tent from, I got in there before 10, well before 10, and I crawled out at 7. So that's 10 hours in the tent, and I'm sure I slept for plenty of it. Okay, I'm going to get back to my coffee and daydreaming and whatever else. Lake is getting still. Nice. Well, I'm just sitting here, drinking my coffee and thinking. And uh, this might be the last trip of the year. Because I, I just really didn't enjoy dealing with cold. Um, partly because I just, I'm too heavy. I mean, I'm still, I'm just uh, 196 when I left. Which is a little heavy for me. Usually... By the end of backpacking season, I'm 190 or 185. And uh, that much more on my belly just is, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, uh, the clothes don't fit quite as well, you know, a lot of little things like that. Um, and I'm a couple years older, I guess, maybe that's part of it, I'm not really sure. But, uh, I might, there's one more trip I would like to do this year if the circumstances arise. I want to, I want to go back to the, uh, the Jones Fork of Silver Creek, the outlet of Maud Lake again. Uh, that's a fairly easy hike. It's, it's mostly level and it ought to be probably five miles if the gate is closed at the uh, Wrights Lake campground. 
Um, but that's the place I stayed a couple years ago. And it was absolutely beautiful, but it was a really mosquito-y. And if we get uh, some storms here, and the water starts flowing again, there's some snow and some accumulation and stuff, and then we get another warm spell, uh, I, I might go for that. I might go for that. That would be really fun. Um, otherwise, uh, I gotta lose weight. I'm just not comfortable with this weight. I have a friend that's you know, my size and several pounds heavier, and he, he, he oh, never mind. <laughs> you don't want to hear about that. Uh, man, it's, it's really pretty out here, though. Sad to be leaving, but uh, relieved at the same time. Um, my back is bugging me. Worried about food. Didn't see the bears. I was, uh, did I mention that uh, people that I talked to on the trail showed me pictures of a family of bears that they um, spotted uh, on the, uh, the trail between here and Echo Lakes. So there was certainly a possibility of uh, bears coming around last night. But uh, my, the garbage bag that I forgot to put into my, uh, my, um, bear canister I, I hung from a tree um, near the tent bear canister was way down here and I was already in bed when I realized that I had it <laughs> I wanted it out of the tent but I didn't want to come all the way down here uh, that didn't get disturbed and uh, my bear canister didn't get disturbed so well this is the glassiest lake I've seen in, in a couple of years Looking nice. Well, just sitting in camp listening to an audiobook or a short story and glanced over here and just took a double take. Pretty lake today. My God. Camp is still in the shade though, which is nice. I'm <laughs> I've got lots of clothes on. I'm beginning to feel too warm, and suddenly I'm going to have to take off a whole bunch of layers. I even got my insulated pants on. I haven't oh, I've worn those like twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I came up here for some cold, if only to use some gear that I bought for cold. Those pants. Uh, and uh, that pad, that insulated pad, I bought that two and a half years ago, at least. And didn't use it until last month. Because <laughs> uh, I was planning to use it for late season hiking that year. And then the fires closed everything down and they did the next year too. Damn it. <laughs> but uh, boy, I, I like that thing. It was a little warm last night. At first, when I first called in, I thought it was going to be too warm of a night, but it got cold. It got plenty cold. But I was comfy under all my warmth and with the warm pad. It would not have worked. Boy, it would have been rough with the other pad because it would, it would just be sapping heat from me all night. All right, uh, I got some breakfast to eat here, so I'm going to sit down and eat and listen to the rest of that short story. It is so damn pretty today. I'm having a hard time thinking about packing up. It's prettier today. I mean, it's nicer today than yesterday. It was quite hazy yesterday at uh, noon. And it's quite clear right now at 8.30 or something like that. Oh, it's lovely. Ah. <sighs> Uh, yesterday I noticed on the uh, the, t the trail going around Echo Lakes, little bits of fire, a little, a little bits of remnants of fire, a little um, uh, tiny little embers from the uh, Caldor fire raced, racing ahead. I'm kind of happy, I was kind of surprised that this whole area didn't burn here. Um, way up on the on the trail there, in the middle of that high granite up there. Yeah, right about the middle of that high granite up there. 
on the in the center of the screen. Uh, I saw a, a good, you know, uh, four by four foot area that had burned uh, right on the trail. And on the trail yesterday, I saw lots of little spots, just embers that had burned uh, four square inches. Oh, it's pretty today. Jeez. Well, the sun is on my back and I'm beginning to get warm. Maybe time to loosen a layer or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to my pondering. Uh, it's about to sit on this log here. And then I'm looking at it, and I think, where the hell did this thing come from? <laughs> and I get up and look around, and I see, oh, it came from there. But how, how, uh, <laughs> how did it manage that log over there? How did it manage to get there from being up there? Somebody, something moved it. Maybe high water? Maybe the water gets this high. I don't really know. Huh. Or people, maybe people with horses moved it. I don't know. I'm just uh, stumbling around here, contemplating. Definitely, uh, when it gets warm enough to take my jacket off, it's still under 50 degrees. It's chilly. When it gets warm enough to take my jacket off, I'm going to go hike over to the guys' lake, take a look at it. Uh, but if I do pack up and leave, I'm not going to be in a hurry. And it might be dark by the time I get to my car. Because I want to enjoy this lovely day here. And it is nice. All right. Well, I got a lot done. I went to do a poop walk, wandered way down, way over yonder um, towards the uh, edge of the cliff over there where I could see Echo Lakes. Did I mention that I could see uh, lights from a cabin from Echo Lakes last night? That was kind of weird. A little bit too much civilization for my taste uh, being out here. Um, but then I remembered that last night and, uh, realized that my satellite messages don't seem to have gotten to Kathy, my, my sister, um, or at least she didn't reply and she said she would. Um, so I wandered over there and, uh, turned on the cell service on my phone and eventually got just enough signal to send out a text. So... So, uh, early in the morning in my tent, I, I heard a helicopter in the distance. And for a moment, I imagined my sister on the helicopter who would badgered, uh, search and rescue people to, <laughs> to come and get me because she hadn't, uh, heard from me. Uh, did I mention the first time I took this thing out and, uh, I was at Lion's Lake, which is that's surrounded by granite. I don't know, that wasn't even the problem. The problem was that there was an outage in the system. And she did not get my message on, on night, day one. And on day one, she called uh, uh, everybody and browbeated them into at least checking up on me. And they drove out and they left a message on my car and wanted me to call them, the, the Placerville Sheriff wanted me to call them when I got out. And I, I apologized because <laughs> I know that's not what they do for uh, missing persons calls, but she must have really laid it on them, man. <laughs> Some poor sucker drove all the way from Placerville, all the way up to Wright's Lake, and, and left a message on my car. It was just hilarious. Um, all right, uh, I'm just going to sit and ponder for a bit. I'm going to have to take off some more layers, and then I'll probably nibble a bit and wander over to uh, Walston Lake, I think it's called. Um, no signs of many day hikers yet. Uh, not too surprising. They'll be, they'll be around. But yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, really mixed feelings about that. Uh, but I think I got what I wanted, um, and I want to go home. I, uh, 
don't know if I want to deal with another cold night and it'll be colder and it might be much colder because that, that system is coming in. It's supposed to be coming in on Friday. Tomorrow is Thursday. But you never know. It might be a little early. And that wouldn't be fun. Okay, that's enough. There's a flock of robins on the shore pecking at the water and the rocks. There's at least a dozen of them. They're quite wary of me, but I'm doing a slow approach and see if I can get to the point where they can be seen on the screen. Yep, bathing away. All right, it's 11 o'clock. Camp is pretty well secured, and I'm uh, gonna take off on the trail. Let's check this out. I don't know if you can see that. Managed to rig a, a lightweight, hands-free water carrying system because I want to bring my poles. Uh, it's cold. I mean, it's, it's quite cool. It's in the mid 50s still. Oh, see how this feels. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm took off all the underlayers. Just have long pants and long sleeve shirt on now. And I'm gonna do the leisurely stroll over to Ralston Lake. Close to the end of the lake here, and you can see uh, this little hill in the foreground. Uh, to get to Cagwin Lake. You want to go around this little hill and then sharp to the left to go to Ralston. It seems you just keep going straight instead of doing the hard left. But I don't really feel like I'm doing really good navigating here. I'll take it back. Here's a piece of trail that looks reasonable. A lovely day. Well, you can see the lake down there, but I suddenly find myself in this little tiny grove of remarkable juniper trees. I'm not going to go much further here. Man, isn't this something? Look at that one. It is so beautiful. Right next to this perfectly dead one. Wow. Wow, that's a beast. Oh, man, that is one beautiful, beautiful tree. Lovely bark. Jeez. Well, I don't want to go all the way down. I did kind of want to scope for campsites, but I've never heard of any campsites here. Oh, that's a beautiful lake. My goodness. That's uh, Ralston Peak up there. Beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. I'm trying to uh, search the terrain for something like a campsite, but it appears that the, there's at least, you know, six, eight, ten feet cliff or very steep all the way around um, I can imagine somebody uh, scraped out a campsite down there there's uh, nice trees I see a little bit of brown dirt here comes a blue jay wow another magnificent tree down there gee that's a beauty and uh, down that way, that's the outlet there. Down down there is Cagwin Lake, just out of sight. It's not far away at all. These three lakes are so close together, it's amazing. If you're a day hiker picnicking, this, I wish Pujita was here with me right now. Ugh. 
because she is a tree hugger extraordinaire and she would be hugging the hell out of this tree look how lovely it is under here man this is such a beauty not terribly comfortable it's very rocky but uh, i'm sure many people had their uh end of day hike picnic right here because it's just too lovely magnificent view magnificent shade tree mm. well this is nice i like this tree so much i wish i could back out and get a better shot of it maybe i can Nah, you just got to be here. Well, uh, I didn't bring any food with me, so I'm not going to be here that long because I'm going to be hungry real quick. Ow! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I just bumped right into this thing. It was just uh, above the view of my cap, my hat. Smacked my head really good. Hope, uh... The hat was able to keep it from bleeding. Oh, I take it back. This is a comfortable seat here. Big bump right here through the hat. So, yeah, just a little red. Oh, this is nice. I wish I brought lunch. Yes, this is the view perched under this beautiful juniper tree. Somebody set up a little, a little rock seat leaning against the tree. I usually don't like those because most of the trees are just covered in sap. But these trees don't do that. <sighs> okay, I'm going to sit here and drink some water, I guess. That's all I got. Oh, it's beautiful. One more attempt to capture this tree. I mean, it's pretty every way you look at it. Well, my tummy is crumbling. I had a nice, peaceful stay here. Tried my, tried my best to capture this tree, <laughs> but I don't know how well I did. And uh, it's beginning to uh, get breezy. I didn't, uh, I didn't secure a camp for big time winds. So just, just to be prudent, heading back. There is a pretty good trail system. Once you get past uh, Tamarack Lake, uh, it consolidates pretty well. Uh, and then the final hop over here is very clear, very easy. <sighs> Lovely hike. Okay, but I will put the camera away and I will get serious. Well, I moved over to a new sitting spot, new shade zone. I pretty much packed everything that I'm not going to be using. So just a few minutes packing to be done and hit the trail. I just don't want to hit the trail and uh, I don't have to yet. So uh, I'm going to stay here a little while longer. Well, it's about 1.30, and I'm about ready to put the uh, pack on and get on out of here. Still have not seen anybody today. I heard voices coming from the uh, trail junction area, but nobody has uh, shown up here. Um, it could also have been voices from way up on the Pacific Crest Trail. The voices can really travel far around here but it's chilly it's uh, about 60 degrees in the shade and uh, I'm a little little cold in the shade um, motionless in my regular hiking attire which is what I'm going with and I think I'll be just fine once I start moving the Sun is bright uh, no clouds uh, breezes are kicking up so that makes it a little chilly but uh, since I'm going downhill almost all the way, uh, shouldn't be sweating too hard. Should be a nice, very pleasant hike, actually. It's pretty close to perfect. 
uh, conditions right now. Okay, I'm going to put the pack on and go. Goodbye, beautiful lake. It's been a long time since I was here, but I see it all the time from up on the Pacific Crest Trail. But it's pretty nice here. There's a lot of camping here. And it's, it just keeps going. Uh, you just keep going that way. And you, you, you see tent spots, you know, 100 yards away. 200 yards. Uh, it's crazy. Anyway, that's it. We're out of here. I mean, oh, there's the junction. A mere 3.8 miles back to the car. Still no signs of humans. Huh, yeah, that was pretty easy. And uh, let's see. It took me, old beat up me, seven minutes to get here. <laughs> Not fast enough, I would have guessed. Uh, I feel really good actually. Uh, in the shade when the winds kick up. I'm in danger of being chilly, but I'm still warming up, and it's, I think it's going to be just fine. Uh, I'm a little thirsty, and I can feel hunger coming soon, so I better tent all of that stuff. And make sure it's a really pleasant hike. I'm only 15 minutes into my hike, and I already took a break and doubled down a couple hundred calories and drank some water, uh, and a backpacker came down the trail mentioned that was he was the first person I'd seen in 24 hours he said it'd been about 30 hours for him I don't know where he stayed last night but not a lot of people back here and with the storm coming there should be a lot fewer okay I'm not even in a rhythm yet let's get going it's stumbly oh there's a triangle lakes trailhead or junction and just beyond that is the wilderness boundary sign and just beyond that is a lovely view of Echo Lakes again <laughs> lots of views of Echo Lakes ta-da oh it's a rocky trail I'm going to be getting tired by the time I get home I mean, to my car. All these rocks. Oh, I just saw my second person of the day. A woman uh, going hiking in, going to Triangle Lake. And I told her all about my experience there uh, before Labor Day. And she said she was trying to find if there was a, a campsite there or not. And, I said, well, you didn't find my video. You should have looked for my video. <laughs> should have seen my video. And I said, mentioned, told her all about the campsite there. Told her that she's probably the only person out here tonight. Um, okay, I don't need to take a break for long and get back going. So these rocks are just annoying me. I'm all stumbly today and have to be uh, very, very conscious of where I'm putting my feet and my trekking poles. Um, should be coming into nice forested footpaths fairly soon. I hope so. I'm getting tired of this. But there'll be more of this later. Uh, the boat taxi junction took me by surprise. All of a sudden I'm here. And I'm just noticing something. I've never noticed it before. I was mentioning the rocky trail and even through the forest there it's still rocky. Over here? Nothing. No rocks. I remember the last time I went this way, uh, the uh, first part was really nice, smooth, soft. And there's the pier down there, I don't know if you can see. I don't really care. Ancient, ancient foot marker there, <laughs> 100 years old easily. Another one here, and another one there. You don't see a lot of those anymore. Most of the trees that have those markings there, that it's either been totally healed or the tree has fallen over now. Okay, I'm just kind of a boring stretch here. Be nice to have someone to talk to. 
so I'm talking to my camera. But we've got some more rocks here. Really nice, cool spot for a break here that I, I took and enjoyed immensely. Some day hikers, they were slowly gaining on me, so I, and I found myself rushing to stay ahead of them, so I just let them pass. <clears throat> nice folks. Uh, but I guess I'm ready to get going again. Nice, damn it. Guy paddle boarding with his dog out there. <laughs> Happy dog. Ah, those days and tw day hikers in front of me. We've been on the same uh, speed for a while now. God, I'm really tired. Um, the trail is wearing on me. It really, I think four miles from me really is too far to go non-stop. So, I've been doing lots of little stops. Anyway, I'm tired. I'm almost there, though. Let's go. Hey, folks. Man, wiped me out again. Big surprise, right? It always... It always happens. Uh, this trail is tough because it was bright and sunny today, and uh, the uh, I was getting direct sun and reflected sun off the lake. So my right side of me is got a lot of hot, a lot of heat. Um, but uh, I bumped into, had chats with all kinds of fun people. Um, had a good time. Um, not regretting leaving. I mean, I, I was going back and forth on that, but literally, uh, the food that I would have left would basically be dinner and breakfast, dinner tonight, breakfast tomorrow, and no lunch. I can't do that. I just can't do that. Uh, but it was a great stay. It was uh, great weather, good, beautiful sunrise, uh, glassy lake today. It was fun. And I really like the, the hike to uh, Ralston Lake. That's a pretty place. I don't think there's going to be any camping there. But I hope to take Pujita to see that tree. It's that magnificent. And she will really like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, about as cleaned up as I'm going to be for the road. But I'm going to take off anyway. Later campers.